Modern Horizons 3 may have fixed the modern metagame, and before you click off, your favorite modern drama channel is here to tell you why. I want to take a look at some of the archetypes that have come out of modern and take a look at what is actually going on in the metagame, because if we take a look at this breakdown on the screen right now, the seven day breakdown, very cherry picked, I will acknowledge, but because of how recent Modern Horizons 3 has been released, it's good to note that decks like Ruby and Storm, deck like Bant Nadu are at the top and heck, living end making its way up at the top as well. How the relevancy of combo is actually really important for the health of the modern metagame. Now, obviously this could be blown out to some extreme. We could see some decks reach some unhealthy levels and only time will tell for that. And that's kind of what I wanted to discuss today. Not only provide an update to you modern players, maybe who have taken a break and coming back into Modern Horizons 3 and trying out a lot of things, just giving you an idea of what to look out for, but also have a general discussion with some of you that may have been playing for the past week pretty actively and noticing maybe some trends and you don't know how to take it. You don't know if these combo decks like Ruby Storm that could win on turn two it's actually healthy for the modern meta game or might actually serve as a good stopgap, a, a police of some of the nonsense that's already been going on. So, of course, if you want to see more content like this, then you got to leave a like on the video and comment down below what you want me to talk about in terms of modern and subscribe for more. But even Popper as a format has had so many combo decks be in and out of its metagame and in a very curated sense for something like modern and legacy older formats, heck even Pioneer as well. We have combo decks running around everywhere, and for Modern Legacy, we've had them running around for longer. And, and they've had their time in the limelight, the ever so prevalent unbanned twin meme that's been going around for Modern. But it's important to understand that the philosophy around what it means to be a combo deck in Modern has changed over the years. And the whole concept of format identity is kind of just like a boomer term now, where I have fallen prey to using it as well. But it, it, every time I do, it feels like modern doesn't really have a stagnant identity. It's not necessarily that turn four format anymore. It's kind of morphed into a turn three format where when you peel back the tape, it feels a lot faster than what Wizards of the Coast wants you to believe it is. And really, this starts off with something like Nadu. Now, Nadu is the type of card that really has warped so much around it. Having the stat line of something like Oko and Uro, it obviously caught the attention of many Bant players out there already. And I think the big problem that a lot of folks have with this card is the restriction is not restricted enough. When you read the text of the card, it says each creature gains the ability to draw a card or ramp you um, up to two times every time it is targeted. And I think this templating could have been very simply just handled if it wasn't each creature. If it was just Nadu, this card would probably just be a value commander. Maybe you'd like flip it and whatnot. But really, at the end of the day, if you think about it, Nadu being a legendary creature was probably only thought of as a commander card. And heck, when it comes to CEDH, when it comes to commander, the card has a lot of value in it. It's viability in CDH at the upper echelon is yet to be seen, but I mean, just being in the right colors, being in Bant gives it a lot of, you know, a lot of legs up in that sense. But heck, in terms of the casual commander pods, you're already seeing a lot of folks complaining about a card like this because of how easy it is to build. And when it comes to constructed play, we already see a Bant Nadu shell, just honestly a Simic shell that like soft splashes for white because you just need to cast Nadu. But there's so many ways to add Add, like any color you want in this type of shell with something like Delighted Halfling and whatnot. But Bant Nadu and Shuko are the combo. Shuko being a one cost artifact that you can search up with something like Trinket Mage, which I recently learned about, and then something like Urza Saga more commonly played. So the reason I mentioned Trinket Mage is that in this Bant Nadu shell, you're playing a bunch of green tutors. So you can then tutor for not only the Nadu, but you can tutor for the Trinket Mage, which can then look for your Shuko. But then your Urza Saga also looks for your Shuko. And then what happens is you target your Nadu, draw a bunch of cards, you play these other cards that create tokens, uh, this Nantuko card is also pretty insane as well in the deck. And then you draw through your whole deck. In my recent video that I went over on this channel, check that out. I played Nadu Mill. And really all I did was add two crabs. Honestly, I, I, do, I wasn't even genuine with myself by replacing the Thassa's Oracle. Because the whole point of the deck is you draw your entire deck. And then just Thassa's Oracle and then win the game. But the combo is pretty deterministic when you have the right pieces out. And because of the amount of redundant tutors in it. It's yet to be seen if a deck like this becomes another Splinter Twin problem, because at the end of the day, it's the type of deck where if you tap out, you can't do anything, right? You you can't interact in any meaningful way. And there are sections where you can interact. Obviously, killing Nadu is going to be very relevant, but that's really what it is. If you are 
hands down in that type of interaction, then you're not going to be able to stop the combo. And I think that's okay because of the fact that this is just going to force players to interact in a different way. And of course, I will caveat this by saying that without long-term data, we won't know if something like Nadu and Ruby Storm are actually healthy for the format. For now, I think we can do better as a modern format and just interact a little bit better. But the speed of Bant, Nadu, and Ruby Storm cannot be denied. And so the combo goes off. That's fine with Bant, Nadu. I think one of the more concerning things past Bant, Nadu, because I think Nadu is a lot more interactable. It plays a lot of creatures to the board. It plays a lot of interactable elements to the board. And so something like Fatal Push, as simply as that, can honestly solve a lot of your problems and buy you the time you need to potentially win the game from there. But Ruby Storm, I think, might be the more problematic discussion to have. Now, Ruby Storm built around two cards that have recently been printed. So historically, Storm in Modern has played cards like Goblin Electromancer and Brawl Chief of Compliance. So a blue incident and sorcery reducer and then Goblin uh, Electromancer being an is it uh, reducer. Now, that kind of forces the deck to be blue heavy. Right. And so blue, what it's good at is can tripping. You pay like one or two mana. You draw one card. You don't really know what that card is. You don't get a lot of options. And that's really what the deck was good at. It played the mana morphoses. It played the rituals. It played the regular package. The thing that Ruby Storm does better, though, is that with the recent play design differences in terms of red card draw, impulse draw, being exiling from the top of your deck and having to play those cards immediately, the design space of red card draw has really evolved. Look at a card like Ren's Resolve, that for two mana, you get to exile the top two cards of your library, and then you can cast them on a future turn, or you can cast them this turn as well. It's not exactly plotted, but a cards like that just that just give you more cards, raw card draw on a turn that you're storming off built around Ral and Ruby Medallion that reduces the cost of all red spells. So Ral reduces the cost of red incident and sorceries, whereas Ruby Medallion reduces the cost of all red spells. So that's going to reduce the cost of Ral as well, because the casting of Ral is going to be very important for, for you going off, because on its flip side, you're going to be able to then minus eight, depending the number of cards that you've cast earlier this turn. So you can minus eight, then exile a bunch of cards and keep going from there. And, and then ultimately you play Wishboard Main, you remove your win conditions from the main board so you kind of dodge the mill matchup where surgical extraction is going to be able to get rid of some key pieces but if you surgical extraction the past in flames or the wish largely speaking you probably can get there in a game one sense but regardless amethyst or sorry ruby medallion reducing the cost of these cards is important because it's a no longer a creature it's a harder permanent type to interact with in a game one sense because a lot of times folks will have you know griefs they'll have solitudes they'll have fatal pushes and griefs can take cards out of your hand but that's only one card against a deck that can win on turn two really all it needs is one piece to go off and that turn to win really starts with the fact that you go ritual on turn two to create three red mana and then you play the Ruby Medallion, or you play the Ral to then reduce your further rituals and then continue to go off from there. You go ritual into more card draw like Ren's Resolve into Glimpse the whatever. It's like the Red Glimpse Red into you XL the top three cards of your library and you can cast them like stuff like that. You kind of go off from there. So it can happen on turn two, but you could not do that with the previous iteration of Storm because the Ral Chief of Compliance and the Goblin Electromancer had blue in them. You had to cantrip. You had to be blue heavy, but Red is a lot more efficient with that. And because of that turn two win, I think this really really switches the idealization and the formula for what we felt the modern format should be on its head. And I think that's where a lot of these concerns are really going to come through here because folks are concerned that they don't have enough time to interact. And I think with Nadu, you do have time. There are openings that really slow them down. But with Ruby Storm, you lack that. I, I think there's a lot of graveyard hate that, you know, they can get around. They may not need to cast Pass in Flames if they're lucky, but chances are they do. And there aren't, there isn't really any searching that they're doing. So it's not like you're playing anything like Ashiok Dream Render. I, I mean, they're just doing a lot of things that grab stuff from their sideboard, playing a lot of red spells. I, Fluster Storm is obviously still an option here because they're going to Fluster Storm and go for some type of Grape Shot. They're going to go for some type of Goblin Warrens or uh, not Goblin Warrens. I, I might be misnaming the card here, but the one that creates a bunch of 1-1 Goblins. Those are the options that they have out of the sideboard. And I think it's really important to understand what that means for the rest of the metagame. If I pull up the metagame screen again here, you're going to see that it's a lot of these kind of non-interactive linear decks that are now kind of taking the top of the roost here. So living and being at the top of the metagame is really important because a lot of the times, yeah, Nadu can go off. But if you just get out like a force negation on the Ruby Medallion, you get a force negation off on the tutor that they have. You can then living in the turn after and really just overwhelm an opponent's board. Ghoul Prowess can really honestly win 
in on turn three a lot of the times with uh, a little bit of removal, a little bit of interaction, especially with stuff like the uh, kind of uh, the lava sp lava darts that they have out of the graveyard that can ping out a lot of the pieces in the Nadu decks. Heck, it, it can work against the Ruby Storm deck as well if you can burn them out fast enough. And then Tron ultimately at the top because it honestly just wants to go uh, one, two, seven, play some dumb creature. It probably plays like Karn into Trinisphere. And Trinisphere honestly solves a lot of this pretty dang well when it comes to Ruby Storm, but that's if you can get there. So a lot of times it can play out like four copies of Relic, play some main board, and then it can get away with that in game one. And then the rest of the metagame, it kind of makes sense. Like in an open metagame, you have stuff like burn. You have a Boros energy deck running around right now, which is kind of like mid range burn. It's playing like flages and stuff and mono black scam because grief is still one of the most busted cards in modern right now. But that's kind of where the modern metagame is. And I think ultimately, as my concluding thought here, with all that being said, I think it's actually going towards a good place because I think combo needs to be able to thrive in this metagame. I think we've had mid range soup for way too long, being exacerbated by Rakdo scam and the four color Omni decks and the kind of is it mid-range decks i think too many folks have been able to just play out a single threat and hide behind an interaction for too long and this type of interact this type of gameplay here with the combo decks forces people to be faster it forces people to be proactive and not hide behind the forces and negations hide behind the spell pierces hide behind the lightning bolts and the fatal pushes it forces them to be more proactive play a game plan that actually forces you to win instead of forces your opponent into a lock into doing something right because ultimately speaking your opponent will have something you have to play interaction but you can't hide behind it because your threats are super efficient what combo here does is it presents you with a solution uh, like sorry a problem it prevents you with problem a do you have a solution to problem a great then what happens is they present you with problem b do you have a solution to problem b great then they're going to keep trying and trying and trying and eventually they're going to run out of gas whereas what happened with the mid-range soups was that the cars that they were playing on an individual basis wasn't just problem a they would present problem a which then was also creating problem a a1 and a2 right like you play the one ring and it's like okay i don't really need to deal with that but wait a second they have protection all of a sudden then they're drawing three cards all of a sudden and then they're just outvaluing me all of a sudden and then they play grief okay they're kind of losing a card they're going down on a card all of a sudden they reanimate it all of a sudden they have a four three with like menace that you can't block you don't have a fatal push for it. you don't have a path for it like all this stuff the cards that the mid-range players were playing outvalued you at all turns but the combo decks presents a situation that now forces you to be faster than them to keep up with them and i think that's really important for the modern metagame i think the metagame slowed down way too much. I think it frustrated a lot of players. I think at the lower to mid range tiers, it opened up a lot of deck building options for folks. But I think that just clouded um, and was clouding those folks out there that said modern wasn't a healthy place. And I think as mill players as well, in a combo centric metagame, we are able to take place uh, and take our hold in that metagame, metagame a lot better because we have the pieces like surgical extraction. We have the pieces that prevent, you know, kind of punish searching. We have all the removal. We have all the right tools to tackle a metagame like this so all my mill players on the channel i highly recommend get out there get brewing show some crabs at people throw some archive traps at those searchers and really take advantage of what's going on right now because uh, you know if tron living and bant nadu ruby storm yet to see if that's really a good matchup for us but if those are going to be the decks at the top in the metagame then we're really going to be able to take advantage of this and for all you other modern players i highly recommend you try this out try this metagame out before you get tired of all the combo decks because at the end of the day you're able to really answer these combo decks in a very easy fashion. You're able to build your sideboards very succinctly into having these type of options. And if you have it or you don't have it, you're then going to be able to move on from there. Go to your next game. Go GG. Instead of having to grind out all these mid range soups where ultimately you lost in some type of hidden value that you didn't really see because the one ring is winning the game, but you weren't able to visually see that it was just kind of drowning you out in value or the same thing with Omnath, the same thing with Teferi, the same thing with grief scam the thing, same thing with subtleties into a murk tide like these are the things that hide the type of win conditions they have and i think can lead to frustrating game uh gameplay but i will acknowledge that those decks maybe outside of the scam decks are great for the modern metagame as well and i think those decks will also evolve have their place in the metagame as we settle as the modern horizons three cards take their place and i think that's what's going to be really important here so anyway those are going to be my general thoughts on what's going on in the modern metagame let me know what you think in the comment section down below do you think i'm off basis do you think the combo deck should really take a seat back do we need to get some bannings out do you think ban nadu is actually as bad as it is and do you think ruby storm is much worse sound off in the comments i'd love to hear your thoughts down below let's talk everything Modern Horizons 3.